In our previous sessions, we learned about journal and ledger. Do you want to take a quick recap on what we have learned? Here you go. The accounting process starts with the journal. Transactions are first entered here under the double entry system of accounting. After recording the transactions in the journal, recorded entries are classified and posted into different ledger accounts. Now, after the posting is completed, what does the business want to do? Summarizing all the transactions and preparing financial statements, right? But before that, the business wants to make sure that the posting into ledgers has been done correctly. For this purpose, they make a statement called trial balance. These are the learning objectives of this session. Let's get familiarized with trial balance and see some features and characteristics of trial balance. Trial balance is a statement in which the balances of all ledgers are compiled into debit and credit columns. Note that Trial balance is not an account, it is just a statement summarizing all the ledger accounts. This is how a typical trial balance would look like. See the header, trial balance as on a particular date. As I just mentioned, trial balance is a statement and it is always prepared as on a particular date. It is usually prepared at the end of the accounting period. If it is 31st March 2017, trial balance shows what the account balances are as on March 31st 2017. Now I am just going through each column a trial balance has. The first column, the serial number. Second column, the name of the ledger account. Note that all the ledger accounts should be included in the trial balance. Third column is the ledger folio number. It is a ledger reference number showing from which ledger the balance comes from. The next two columns show the debit amount column and the credit amount column. Alright, so that's a trial balance. Now you total each amount column. As the transactions are journalized and posted under the double entry system, and the closing balances of all these ledgers are brought into the trial balance, the total of the debit balances must be equal to the total of the credit balances. Yes, this is your control check. If the two sides do not agree, then there is an error which we need to inspect. If the total of debits is equal to total of credits, it ensures reasonable accuracy of the accounting work and we will be confident that the books are free from clerical errors. Again, why am I saying reasonable accuracy? This is because trial balance is not a proof for 100% accuracy. Because there can be some errors of principle and compensating errors. We will learn about these later. A trial balance helps in the preparation of financial statements which are trading account, profit and loss account, and balance sheet. Preparing the final accounts directly from ledgers is a very difficult task. Hence, they are prepared using the trial balance through which we already verified the mathematical accuracy. Now, do you realize how helpful a trial balance is? It ensures reasonable accuracy of the ledger accounts. It helps in detecting errors in your books. It provides a summary of all ledger balances as on a particular date. And finally, it acts as a base to prepare the final accounts.